Welcome. You're listening to a Rollmaster classic actual play set in Terry Case Anther's excellent Shadow World using Fantasy Grounds. You can find session summaries, items and characters on Obsidian Portal, where our campaign is called The Praise of Old Men. This episode is cross-referenced as Chapter 4, Demons of the Burning Night, Part 5. We're also on YouTube, Podbean and Twitch, where you can find the various links as well as an index of some of the main points of each episode in the description. I'm starting to trim these a lot more, maybe add a little bit of narration, just to try and keep some of the run times down on these. Previously, the search for the two powerful artefacts has taken the party to a three-storey building, far more intact than others in the city. Exploring it has revealed areas for a throne, idol, and huge black obelisk on the bottom floor. In the circular tower that forms the upper levels, the party finds steel doors that ward some of the rooms and what appears to be an armory or museum of sorts. A locked steel door protects an inner library, but aside from a disappointingly and deeply mysterious empty sack, the bookshelves and chamber are empty, and still nothing moves or threatens the party, despite the low, constant thumping noise emanating from Cran's sword. Are we missing anybody, or am I being stupid? I think it's a full house. Oh my god, sorry, I, I don't know why I was expecting more. Okay, so uh, if you're all in, hopefully you've got that map. You can see the token for those of you that weren't here. And unlike um, the people that live in Virginia, uh, you haven't listened to the podcast or anything. You had explored the first level of what is clearly some sort of palace. Down below, you'd come across a temple with a rather unusual depiction of clearly a figure that's important for the people that used to live in Tarek Nev and Aaron Moore, the Noretti. Exactly who this god and what this god represents, you don't know yet. You haven't had time to do much research on the matter. You very quickly found a set of stairs leading up, and rather than explore the rest of the ground floor in true um, paranoid dungeon dungeoneer fashion, I, you've left doors behind you that are closed and bits on the map which are still shadowed, you immediately headed upstairs. Uh, I won't show share with you the uh, lower level unless you go down. You've explored much of this upper level, which you can see has this peculiar red serpent inlaid into a rather attractive on its own was, um, tiled floor. The serpent, much like the large mosaic down below, is made of brightly coloured pieces of glass and also very, very small gemstones inlaid into the floor. Looks to your eyes as if this snake coils its way round what you imagine is going to be a circular upper floor. The head of the serpent actually sticks into a room not far from where Cherry is. Uh, the room itself seems to be some sort of antechamber. The room is held a single cot and a smashed bureau. On the floor, there was a large iron skull cap that Cran very wisely decided to pick up to protect his bruised head should he come across another demon with a flaming sword again. <laughs> the room next to it looked to be some sort of armory or museum. Part of the floor has caved in. You can see that not far from where Cran is standing uh, on the other side of the wall. You recovered from that chamber a rather potent shield, which Cherry has decided to use, although Cherry has warned you that the shield is highly reflective. And unless she covers it up, almost any available light source is reflected many, many fold. That can be quite useful because she can see that it might actually blind opponents in combat. However, at the moment, with the city being dominated by this black murk, smog and filth that fills the air, the shield probably won't work at its best. There was also a highly decorative suit of armour, which I think, Victor, did you claim that suit of armour? It's certainly on the Obsidian yeah, Portal site. OK, so the details are all on the Obsidian Portal site. Uh, Victor, if you want to put that armor on now, I think that takes your armor class, your armor class two or armor type, sorry, to twenty. Yeah. But it actually encumbers, I think, as a lower armor type. Let me just have a quick look. Yeah, twelve. Twelve. So uh, I'm going to set the armor type at twenty. And I think I can, you'll have to manually put in, I think you can manually put in what the minimum manoeuvre penalty is 
maximum maneuver penalty is and what the hits are. So there's no missile penalty. There's no quickness penalty. I think the minimum maneuver penalty for armor type 12 is anybody know off the top of their heads? Uh, Might be 15. Maneuver mod uh, 15. Yeah, 15. Do you know what the maximum is? Maximum is 110. Okay. Yeah, if you just stick it in the combat tab, it looks like it just gives you straight away. Yeah. Okay, so I think I've entered that correctly for you, Victor. You're shown as armor type 20 full plate, but the maneuver penalties are different. Okay. Are there any questions before we proceed? Did so. you get a leather sack? Oh, please, no. <laughs> uh, you may, if you wish, pick up the container. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that was a good roll on laugh. That was a good callback. <laughs> I am never again going to have, in any game that I ever run or play in, a sack. Any who is speaking right now? Can I just ask who is speaking? <laughs> Do you know what? There's going to be a sudden power cut, and you guys are going to have a Friday evening after oh. whatever to do your own game because now I'm sulking. No, I'm sorry. It's amazing. You shouldn't... <laughs> don't don't send me back to the wife. <laughs> Not the okay, for the sake of for the sake of Steve's marriage, we must continue. Yes, you can have a sack if you want. It can even be a wrinkled one if you wish. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Deep breath. Oh, deep breath. Wrinkled deep sack for you, buddy. You don't know the day I've had you bastards. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, where next? Uh, you can see that the corridor with the snake's tail, bodies sinuously winding around the walls, continues. Uh, to move away from Cran uh, anti-clockwise. Um, okay, we'll carry you... on. Yeah, okay. Yep. And we came from the north, is that correct? Yes, Our that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's a set of stairs that lead down. Okay. Um, and you've got a light source there, haven't you, which is coming from Ugnan. I think, okay. just... Victor, does Victor have one as well? Or was it Yarn? Yeah, I had one. Sorry, Nimmo. Just so I know which way to run when shit hits the fan. <laughs> Oh, you wait and see. All yeah. of those remarks about wrinkled sacks. That's I'll right. get you, my pretty, and your dog. You pass a number of doors on the left. Cran, you can see one further ahead. All of these yeah. doors are the same as the others that you've seen. They're made of uh, stout metal, though none of them seem obviously padlocked. The one that you've just passed uh, doesn't even have any sort of lock mechanism. One there, I confess. There's also, uh, in case you you uh, were wondering but were too embarrassed to ask, you can notice that there's a section of wall which is clearly um, not stone but been boarded up not far from Cherry. That's not a mistake in my mapping. That is actually a boarded up section of wall. And if you recall, at the top of the map, so as you entered the stairs, there was a wooden boarded up section immediately as you cleared the stairs. What lies behind that barricade, you don't know. Okay, um, well, let's go inner, inner first and then outer. Yeah, fine. Bye with me. Sounds good. Cherry, I'm assuming you're doing the honours, um, checking for traps and then opening doors, or Cran, do you in just want to open want and to go, go ahead? No, I trust in Cherry's better eyesight and wisdom. I'm such a young lady. I've got better eyes than all of you old me. <laughs> Bloody it's cheeky with it. <laughs> uh, Cherry, I'm assuming you're searching the door here. Yep. The door doesn't seem trapped at all, but you can see at the bottom of the door, um, there's obviously quite a bit of corrosion. It's Is the door metal? or Yes. Oh, like okay. most of the other doors, well, like all the other doors you've seen up here, they're made of a fairly stout, but not too thick metal. This one is corroded. You can see it's pitted at the bottom and there's a fair amount more rust than you'd expect. You'll recall that because of the distortion, the temporal distortion that this entire city is under, time isn't flowing normally. And despite the vast time that's passed in the city, things have not decayed, corroded or fallen apart as they might be expected to. Some of you might be a, might have a, an inkling as to the artifact that is distorting time in the city or artifacts and if you want a, a clue you can make an intelligence role sorry uh, a reasoning role beyond cran <laughs> it just gives up beyond me okay 
Silk, you know that... Oh, that's not bad. Uh, Silk, Numal, actually, and Ugnan, um, and Cherry, actually. You only have to roll over 50. The portal rods that you seek, uh, you're seeking them because they can distort and bend and control time. And it's perhaps because the portal rods are hidden somewhere in the city that the entire city's timeline has been so disrupted and distorted. Oh, man. Yeah, I immediately tell everyone. Wow. So if, you, so if you can recall and go way, way back, you're after two objects in the city. You're after the portal rods, which you've been told will not only help free the seer who is trapped beneath the city of Selkai, but you're also after the Ashling Stone. Now, the Ashling Stone is a potent item which will basically mean that she survives when you use the rods to free her from the time trap that has bound her underneath the city. Uh, the portal rods will also help you get in touch with Queen Mab, who you know has been plaguing you on and off ever since you first arrived in Selkai City. Cool. And the Iron Bell, aren't they after one of these things to try and see back in the past? The Iron Bell, remember, and the Unseen Eyes are also after the Portal Rods. With the Portal Rods, they can go back in time and find out what happened to the heart of a goth. Remember, there's this artifact that Queen Mab is furious was stolen from her and she wants it recovered. Ever since that artifact was taken from her, she's become more and more uh, difficult to negotiate with and reluctant to use her powers to allow people to use portal spells. So all of the magic, Silk can tell you this, all of the magic that concerns teleportation, true teleportation, i.e. to places that you can't see, or any sort of teleport spell or any gate spell of, of any description relies on Queen Mab's um, permission. It's one of the powers that the Fae have. And eons and eons and eons ago, when the world was first shaped, a bargain was struck with the Fae by the gods of this world. And in return for the Fae's help, the Fae were granted certain immunities and certain permissions. And there's been a truce, as it were, and a cooperation ever since between the Fae and the gods. However, that truce and Mab's permission to use teleportation spells, fortunately, none of you have tried to use those. Although, recall, Silk came close when she tried to step into a mirror in the inn, in the old sword inn. Um, that would have meant, you know, a death of a character. Just the one time she ever tried. <laughs> she's um, normally so good. Yeah, yeah she's normally she's so well, she's, she's normally so restrained. So you'll recall that basically Queen Mab has become less reluctant and she's now sealed virtually all of the teleportation spells, all of the portals that you've come across. And you have come across a few. She wants the heart of a goth returned to her. The unseen eyes want the heart of a goth. The only way that they think they can find out where it is, is to find out who stole it. To find out who stole it, they're going to take the portal rods, step back in time to the scene of the crime, and then go and find the heart of a goth. Alternatively and riskier, they might just prevent that theft in the first place. So, you can see Cran looking at the exposition going on here. The Ugnan's, Ugnan conjecture 2.0. And um, <laughs> That's right. just take, he takes his pot, pot helmet off and just, He's got a bit of sweaty hair matted to his head and he pretends to be um, looking for an invisible bump inside the helmet and uh, looking down at his feet because he has no <laughs> idea what anyone's talking about. So anyway, that's that's basically, I mean, all of this, um, I think you kind of knew, but because we don't play every week, I think uh, many of you had forgotten. Um, obviously for you, Victor, this has been a revelation such that you've suddenly had an epiphany and shout, I know why I'm here. <laughs> I have a purpose. So... The door is corroded, Cherry, back to the matter at hand. The door is corroded. You know that the portal rod's presence in the city is affecting the flow of time, but this door is more corroded than many of the others you've seen. What do you wish to do? As far as you can tell, there's no trap mechanism on it, but there's no lock either. This door is designed to be easily opened and closed. Famous now I'm getting now, Exactly. That's, that, that's big warning signs like in neon over the top going, don't go in, don't go in. <laughs> Um, I would say this looks strange. 
the door's corroded. I'm not sure if it's from water or if it's from other materials. Uh, do you want to give the? Do you want to bend down I, and give the door a sniff to see if you can smell anything? Oh, there you go. That sounds like actually a wonderful idea. Yep, a sniffing roll. All right, yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming oh, so you, this, this being role master, I'm assuming you have the sniffing skill developed. Silk oh, actually definitely. takes five more steps away because he does, she doesn't want to make things worse. For okay, there's no acrid smell around the door, so this isn't acid. Um, there is a very, very faint hint of something which is a bit foul, a bit noisome, yep. um, a bit rotted. Yes, perhaps, but it's slight. Yes, there's certainly the smell of something sweet, but it's not acid. There's no acrid burning. Um, yep. Whatever you can smell is faintly sweet. Okay, I'll um, I'll give the door a push. Okay, I'll hop back up and give the door a push first. Don't okay. want to be on my. But I'm not going to go in. Okay, the room is actually rather plain and empty. Um, the reason for the, the smell is now, as you open the door, the smell becomes a little bit more pronounced. Uh, there's a hint of ammonia, but very, very faint and very old. You can see, not drawn on the map, I'm afraid, you can see a number of single um, lavatories lining the far wall. Against the wall just to your left, there are a number of wash basins. This is a rather large and rather strangely large, I have to say, Terry, a rather large lavatory. <laughs> Oh, very, very oh, neat. That explains the rotting. Okay. Yeah, you can see. I say, actually, anyone need to go? <laughs> <laughs> and keep moving. To, Just to the right-hand side, you can see there's a long sort of metallic urinal. And you can see that obviously men being men, sometimes they've not quite hit the they're... target. So there's... Oh. <laughs> So you have to the pay the very men to take you over the river, river sticks. Is that <laughs> Yeah. Um, that's stolen. Um, that joke. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So I'll, um, I'll move up and go, this place needs a washroom attendant. And I'll go up to the next door and start giving it the once over for, for traps, etc. Okay. Uh, give me a perception roll then, please. Just a quick aside, my daughter came back, four years old, uh, and saying, like, oh, I can't wait till Christmas. I'm in the Jesus show. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> the nativity, you mean? No, the Jesus show. The Jesus show. Okay. Uh, um, don't really know how I can follow that. <laughs> The door itself um, is, again, another one of these steel doors. There's no corrosion on it, Jerry. You can't see a trap, but there is on this one, there is um, a rather large lock. Not overly large, but certainly prominent that you can see it. I'll wing, wiggle my fingers in preparation, and um, not that it gives me bonuses, and I'll set to work on the lock. Okay, so can you give me a yeah medium with no penalty? Oh, it's medium? Yeah, cool. Yeah, Cherry struggling with this lock. It's not one of the hardest that you've seen, but there's something about the lock which has defeated two of her attempts, and one of her picks on the first attempt almost snapped. With a sigh, she then opens the door, or rather unpicks the lock on the door. There's a satisfying click, and um, she pulls... Her picks out of the lock. Do you want to open it, Cherry? Yeah. This chamber has a steel door almost opposite the one that you are standing at, Cherry. This looks like some sort of perhaps waiting room. Hanging around the room, there are a large number of faded, very faded tapestries and a number of banners. The banners are all different. Some are long, some are square, some are made of cotton, some perhaps of silk. And you can see that the emblems on them are very different. Some are quite torn, and one or two are stained as if by water, perhaps. There are a number of well-upholstered chairs around the, wall, around the walls as well. But the chamber seems empty, apart from the door on the other the opposite you. Do I see any images of note on the tapestries? What are you looking for, Numal? 
I'm just I'm interested in information about this um, this building and its, its inhabitants. Okay. Inhabitants. Um, anything about the Nereidi gods? That that that. Um, that sort of topic area. You you don't see any. There are none of the figures <laughs> on the tapestries look particularly godlike. Although uh, there is. Give me give me a perception roll, please, Numil. Just anything over twenty will do. Just don't don't mess this up. He says <laughs> apocryphally. <laughs> yes. ah, no problem. One hundred and one. Oh. Um, prominent in many of the tapestries, you can see a tall. Uh, powerfully or powerful looking queenly dark haired woman you suspect that given the aura of command and the majesty with which she rides a large chariot um, waves a spear and clearly commands armies and has people bowing before her it's strongly your suspicion that this is Vrama Ver, the last ruler and the infamous Queen of Tarek Nev. The banners wow. themselves, very, very different. None you recognize, but if they were, you suspect as well, and probably Cran would, would point this out as a, as a soldier, that it's highly likely that these are probably trophies plucked from the dead hands of defeated enemies. Oh, I tend to wear mine, but uh, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And, and do these look faded and old, or is, yes. is, the, is the effect of the time? The well, they're still fade. No, they're faded and old. Uh, but remember, <clears throat> Tarek Nev has been abandoned uh, since the Second Age. So you're talking, you know, thousands of years since anybody has lived in Tarek Nev. And the fact that these things have been turned to dust is uh, obviously a product of the portal rods. So you mentioned, or well, it, it appears to us that this is um, an antechamber. Um, the presumption is it's an antechamber. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, a waiting room. Sorry, that was what you said. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know. To the central. To, so, so it seems that it would be the waiting room. I think I can discern a door. on. Uh, That's right. Yes, there's a door the opposite chamber. the one that uh, Cherry has just opened for you neatly. And is that uh, the only door we've seen to the central The central bit? It None is. None of the other rooms seem to have it. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Silk, so, can you give me a uh, extremely hard perception roll, please? Extremely hard, minus 30. And perception? Yes, please. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, uh, Victor, you can give me an extremely hard one as well, please. Yep. Okay, thank you. That's good. So what next? You've only found one door into what is obviously a central chamber, shaft, or something into the nexus so yeah do you guys want to go through that or do you want to check out the outer rim now like cran was mentioning yeah the complete finishes in the group wouldn't let us go to, down the, <laughs> without Who going are you talking the about outer. not me <laughs> cran cran looks over his shoulder smiles and then just walks back over to this door <laughs> okay Right, so that's a large wooden boarded up section, Cran. With the right tools, you could probably have that down and in pieces in probably about 20 minutes or so. A nice hefty axe will make flinders and kindling of that uh, boarded up area. It'll make a bit of a racket, but you could do it. How does it look like I'm it's been boarded up? Listen, sorry. So how does it look like it's been boarded up? Does it look like it's been hastily done, or is it like they've taken the time with the with um the workmanship? Um, it's it's been done well. So this hasn't been done quickly. This has been done carefully over an afternoon, um, over a morning. Okay. Uh, the wood is finished, smooth, and been put together tongue and groove style. So you can see how flush it is with the stone wall around you, which is obviously perhaps a little bit confusing as to why it was boarded up. It wasn't boarded up in a hurry. And does it show signs of age? So, you know, this wood's been in place for a long time or is it quite fresh? Um, it new, it's, it's, recent? it's showing some signs. Obviously, the wood isn't fresh and green. There's no luster or shine on the wood. Um, but it's certainly not warped. It's not mildewy. And there are no fungal growths or anything. So Cran is going to have 
old faithful Tarnax axe from his shoulder, um, put his just lean the sword against the wall and say, "Stop that bloody annoying beating in the head," and then <laughs> pick up his axe and take a look at the door and say over his shoulder. So, um, are we going through? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're not. <clears throat> Go for it. Uh, Jay, I'll, hang on a minute. Don't call me reckless. <laughs> Cranlis put his, puts his ear to the door and sees if he can hear anything coming from the other side. Okay, you can give me a hard perception roll, please. Cherry, you can give me a sheer folly perception roll, please. You're standing in the dark at the moment. <gasps> I'm in the dark. <laughs> Okay, Cran, no, you can't hear anything at all on the other side of this wooden boarded up section. Cherry. Cran, I hear absolutely nothing. <laughs> Cran, one moment. This is going to cause you to make quite the ruckus just in case. Let me let me help you with <laughs> she okay. puts on She puts on some headphones. There you go. <laughs> I can't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good now. <laughs> no, no. I'll, I'll put my hands against the wood. And I'll cast portal. It'll open a portal three by six by three in any solid surface through which anyone can pass. Uh, Splendid. Yes, so we, that's fine. So just don't don't mess the spell up. That's right. Lofty bridge level six. A little kind of waste of power. Okay, okay. so lofty bridge. Just let me because of obviously Queen Mab's interdict. Lofty bridge can only be used on something that you can see. Can't, yes, can't, that's right. Not, that's right. That's fine. Then there's uh, Queen Mab will have no power over this spell. Well, very yeah, limited. This will power. start from me yeah, outward three by six by. Three. Yeah, that's fine. Go for it. No one to four. Okay, that's fine. So without using your axe, and you can always tell role master characters that have got plenty of power points. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, at first, you know, at a lower level, you'd never have cast that spell. No, uh, yeah. well, even at this level, <laughs> yeah. I probably shouldn't have. Okay. <laughs> It's a much cooler way, though, of finding nothing. Inside, yeah. you can see, obviously, a stone tower. Well, who knows? There's a stone tower with, again, this uh, very carefully and artistically laid uh, tiled floor. The only thing in this chamber, which disappointingly has no chests, no windows of any sort, is a bureau. The bureau itself consists of four drawers. Um about four foot high and about three foot deep and about six foot long. Ken office. Agnan! Sorry, say books. <laughs> Agnan will go in. Uh, he'll take his time, be a bit cautious about it, but check there's nothing on the floor, there's nothing to trip him up, but he will try and head for the bureau. Okay, give me a hard perception roll, please. As you just check to make sure there's nothing unpleasant that's been left behind for people that clearly have been kept out of the tower. Nope. The floor, as far as you can tell, looks fine. Glancing up at the ceiling, the ceiling has a slightly domed appearance. Um, there looks to be, you think, something glistening from the top of the dome. But as you look more carefully, that's uh, what seems to be some sort of old piece uh, or, or an old crystal chandelier. There's a candle just underneath it, and obviously the crystal bit on top would have magnified the signal, the single candle. Other than that, though, the floor and ceiling are as you'd expect. The bureau itself has these four drawers, one underneath the other. They're quite large, um, but none of them seem to have any locking mechanisms on. Yeah, he'll, uh, he'll start looking if he can. Okay. All four of the drawers seem to be full of dark uniforms. Trousers, dark shirt, dark jacket. Trousers and jacket are black. The shirt is a pale grey colour. All made of good stout linen. Not silk, but certainly good quality linen. They've all faded slightly. They're all a bit worn, but you could certainly wear them and then you get some... Um, as unfashionable as they are in Selkai, you could certainly wear them and make use of them if you wanted. Hmm. Hmm, yeah. Well, that seems to be it, though. Yep, that's it, I'm afraid. Okay, he looks and slightly disappointed. Like, house uniform kind of thing for the staff? Or for an army? or? Um, there's no em uh, embroidery on them. 
So there's no insignia of rank. Um, there's no obviously there's no obvious place to sort of um, sling baldricks or belt pouches or weapon rigs at all. So yes, you're probably right. These could well be just servants' uniforms. Silk grumbles, passes by Ugnin and says, "This cost me six power points. I'm taking one." <laughs> Gets out. <laughs> so she'll have a a full set of whatever. Yes, um, I'm afraid I'm not about to tell you that they're magical and just by chance you've got the artifact of whatever. <laughs> that's right. they're not. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's Good okay. Try, though. It's it's going to be something I can bequeath uh, children in my. No, you can if you don't like your children. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they're not, they're not very. This yeah. They're about as fashionable as a punch in the face. <laughs> that's right. I'm going to retreat from that room. Dibs. Okay. All right, let's try that. Try that in a door then, or should we go through the really big wooden one? There might be a really big library of bureaus through there. Well, I think if that's where the snake ends up in the middle, then I think that's where we've got to definitely look at. And then we could probably look on the way out, maybe. Right. I reckon you wangus didn't look hard enough. Right, let's go back and have a look at the head. Crack, crack, uh, head back round this way. We'll come back to that door in a minute. Let me have a look. This is going to fail horribly as he as he wanders round. All right, Cran's obviously got a bee in his bonnet, and drags you all the way round again. Oh, Cherry, bring me helmet, will you? I left it on the floor. Sorry. This is really annoying. Okay, Cran, the completionist. Indeed, <laughs> OCD. I my love my. it. I'm going to love a look as well. <laughs> we miss so much. How much? How much of a challenge is the perception roll? A wise um, GM. Oh, so you're looking for the for the door, aren't you? Uh, let's I'm very carefully. Let's call that a hard perception roll. Oh, I see, because of the snake's head pointing this way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. I'll help him out. Well, bugger me, says Cran. It was here all the while. <laughs> that wasn't Cran, but that was something. Oh, I'm sorry. That was Ugnan. Oh, <laughs> nice. Ugnan's going to say anything yet to see, oh if my Cran, God. see if Cran actually spots it. That's awesome. Uh, no, Cran doesn't just spot it. Cran smells it. He can smell <laughs> a door. Wow, I think I did see a double dice roll there, so that must have been a fairly significant number, I would suspect. Uh, 97 and then a 32 with your bonus, yes. Nice. So, yes, there is a, a hidden door. Um, not to downplay your achievements, as magnificent as they were, it's not exactly a secret door, but it was certainly a difficult one to spot first time. <sighs> well spotted, lad. <laughs> Cran, Cran, Cran looks lost like smug. Now I'm going to open it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Which Cherry. Which sword uh, are you going to use to bend it up? Uh, how about it, Cherry? How about, how about you? Ha ha. I pull out my sword and <laughs> touch the door. Okay. Going the full <laughs> solo, are you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, put, I, put a, I scratch a C into it for Cherry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's see, amongst all of that, yeah, so give me a, uh, I want a very hard perception roll, please. Uh, the so door was concealed the to begin with, so it's obviously been set into the wall quite, quite carefully, uh, but it's not, it's not trapped in any way at all that you can see. I could always have a look as well, lass, if you like. What you do notice though cherry is there's a small sort of hand sized depression in the center of the door slightly bigger than your hand but obviously nowhere as big as crans or victor's victor can you give me a very hard perception roll please yeah okay thank you very much what next i'm going to have a look over the door as well especially around the, the hand mechanism to see if there's anything around it like little tiny holes or if it connects to anything Looks like um, it needs a dainty hand. Ugnan, you try. <laughs> Ugnan, give me a perception <laughs> roll. Uh, very hard or extremely hard? Uh, this is going to be just hard, hard, because you're looking at something a little bit narrower. No, you're like Cherry. You're convinced the door isn't trapped, but there seems no obvious way of opening the door, but there is an obvious depression in the centre of the door. Now, that could be a trap. Or it could be the opening mechanism in some way. Oh, for fuck's sake, Francis, stop faffing around. And he walks over and he says, get out of the way. And he shoves it's, his hand straight into the depression. It's, your hand's a bit too big, you, you big mitten fool. <laughs> I'll use one of my fingers then. <laughs> All right. This big stubby one here. 
All right, Cran covers the door with, a, with his palm and then kind of squeezes and manipulates his hand. Uh, but try as he might, using one digit, two digits, different digits, his whole hand and even his forehead, the door won't open. That's like Cran playing at sex, that is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's a certain sea captain who said that. <laughs> Oh, fuck it. Uglin's going to have a go as well. And when he puts his hand, he's going to try and uh, really concentrate and be trying to access from something from the channeling realm if possible. Please okay. be a glass slipper, perfect fit. Okay. Ugnan, your hand is obviously smaller than Cran, so not by a, a huge amount. Um, healers aren't certainly your sort of healer, are not fragile, frail people. Your hand is a better fit, but again, nothing happens. It's broken. Mm. I can cast that portal spell beside it if it's solid enough and we'll let me... We could, or we could just it open off. the other door. I'm sure there's something in yeah. there we just need to find to like, push in there, like a key, but it doesn't look like a key. Yeah, it's a hand. Well, I'll do it anyway, just in case, just to say I did it. and I'll... Okay, so you're casting your portal spell on the wall or on the door? Oh, sorry. No, no. I'll I'll touch the hand imprint and I'll see if that okay. does anything. Your hand touches the door and the door swings open. What? Whoa. I've never been here before, guys. I swear. I told you Roll she was a demon. Insight. She's a fucking Roll demon. Insight. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'll really life type her. She's not. I was Stuart oh. went, oh, that's easy enough for demons don't have to shrug those off. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see inside the most prominent thing across to the right hand side of the door is a silver poster bed that's obviously the most uh, elegant feature in this bedroom the posts of the bed are made of some sort of highly polished metal and are clearly valuable in and of their own right there are um, also a number of pillars around the walls atop each of the pillars there seems to be a fist-sized gem green gem and there are three of these attached to the wall above each gem is a small plaque the plaque is uh, written in a language which you recognize as black nuretti now at the moment none of you speak black nuretti but a number of you have come across this uh, ancient script so many times that you can recognize it even if you can't read it hmm I do have a spell to translate. Delving ways, text analysis two is as text analysis one except gives a complete technical analysis, vocab and syntax, but not an understanding of idioms, jargon, implications, or cultural reference. Oh my God, Olean Rollmaster, would you get that as a spell description? <laughs> right? <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah, text analysis one is Caster can read bathroom this that you know unknown language but only understands basic concepts of it but this is seventh level text analysis should i should i cast it or no i want to understand idioms what what level do you think <laughs> <it to be? laughs> hey I'm, I'm sure i have text analysis three <laughs> yeah i mean but it's more than an absolute crude understanding if there is some nuance in there we could pick that up i think hmm. yeah okay I think, I think it's an investment because it'd be nice to know what it what it says. But then again, I suppose we could, hmm, I don't know, if we've got other texts to read. I mean, your duration of spell means you won't be able to read more than one thing at the same time and save your points. Well, that's it. It's one minute per level concentration, so I can hold it for eight minutes if there's more that we need to read. And I've got those gems. I mean, I don't want to use them on that. It's better for murder. Oh, those, yeah, those are the... <laughs> Pearls. Yeah, that's Pearls, right. Yeah. Ones. yeah. Is, it, so, is there a, an obvious space on the fourth upright for a missing green gem? Is it the... No, no, there isn't. Mm. I mean, it, it's just not got anything there. You suspect that you could put something there, but there's no obvious uh, thing that's missing there. Can I get an etching of it uh, or engrain, whatever it is, a rubbing of it book just so we can maybe read it later? Oh, you mean you want to step in, put a piece of paper up against the plaques and take a rubbing? Yes, you can if you wish, if you want to go inside. Yep. Yeah, might as well. Ugnan, you go first. Avenge me. Okay, Ugnan, as you step inside <laughs> before Cran steps in, Ugnan. Oh, no. As you step inside, um, can you give me a 
that doesn't really make much sense. No, yes, it does. Um, Ugnan, can you give me a channeling resistance roll? Oh, man. Okay, Ugnan vanishes. Ugnan vanishes? Yep, he <laughs> just vanishes. I'll stay where I am and immediately, self discipline or not, I'll just reach my hand and wave it in his space. You are so jealous now. Okay. Where I am. But I cast you a stupid bastard. Where have you gone? Oh, okay, it's, uh, it's I'll, fine. Just, I'll just tell Ugnan what he can see. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to go in the planning channel? Oh, yeah, that's a lot easier than me typing all of this stuff. Yes, yeah, you've yeah. got to hop in the channeling channel. Hello, Ugnan. So uh, there's a brief flash. And then can you give me a quick perception roll, please? The others won't know what's going on. But if you chuck me a perception roll, yeah, that's good enough. You're in the floor below. You have teleported down to the level two. Remember on level two, there was that um, temple. And that black obelisk. Some, yeah, no, there was a, a temple just below, below you. Oh, that yeah, had yeah. stained glass window and it had an idol. And um, there was some sort of great, big, powerful, bull-like figure with a sickle in one hand and a child in the other. You basically are lying on top of the altar. Ah, okay. So you're in the dark. Although, no, you've got your lantern with you, haven't you? Well, probably would have put it on the floor, to be honest. Would have, have of, you, okay. Uh, then you're in the dark okay. down below. I'll, um, I'll cast light one, which is a second level okay. spell. Okay, right. So just give me a casting spell. Okay. Oh, no, sorry. It's first level one. It's projected light. So it's the okay. same thing. All right. Um, so you can't see anything moving around you. There's nothing come to uh, eat your face or anything like that. Basically, all that you can see is this chapel and this temple around you. I'll so try you and can... sneak back up to the rest, but I'll try and actually stalk it as best I can. So I'll give you a couple okay. of stalk rolls in the tower, yes, and then you, can, and you let me know when I yep, actually that's appear. Great. Just to get, yep. get them shitted up. Oh, this is excellent. Go on, then. I should really scare them by rolling a few random criticals. There you go. There's three stalk rolls. I don't know if they'll be good enough or whatever. Yeah, that'll be good enough. Right, we can join the others in the other ta in the other chat. Okay. Thank you. Something to that okay. effect. Okay. Um, wow, sorry, that never Pat, happened. I've just seen the picture of you wearing a wok. That is amazing. That's going to go <laughs> on the portal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and don't lie, John. That is you. Right. <laughs> I insist that is now your new Facebook page. Yeah, we got you, buddy. So, um, as far as you can tell, Ugnan has vanished. Cherry, sorry, Silk has waved her hand where Cran should be, and he's just not there. Yeah. And almost immediately, with the missing of him with her waving hand, she takes a step forward. Okay. Can you give me a channeling resistance roll, please? Oh, damn it. You mean it might minus, not work? Minus 30. <laughs> oh, okay. That's bad. <laughs> Now I'm happy. <laughs> uh, channeling resistance. Please don't open in. Okay, good. Okay. Um, you two vanish. Uh, Portal time. Hold on a minute. Silk, can you? Crad's going in as well as soon as she's gone in. Okay. Um, all right. Cran, can you give me a channeling resistance roll? You follow closely behind, and then I'm just going to pause for a second there's a lantern on the floor cran can you give me a channeling resistance roll and it was at minus 30 is that right oh yes and sorry there's a lantern on the floor from ug yes right cran you also vanish as well can cran and silk can you join me in the other chat room please oh okay do you want oh, me to no. wait or hey all right move uh yeah silk if you join me in something called the planning channel just below i can tell you what you can see Okay. Please. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm back. Silk is, and Silk has joined us as well. Um, so down below, just because uh, this could get very messy with people hopping channels all over the place. Ugnan, you can hear somebody whispering your name. Can you give me a normal perception roll, please? Sure. Right. You recognize the voice as Silk's coming from behind you. Oh, I'll, I'll turn my hand around and point the light in her eyes. Okay, so I'm assuming the three of you want to make your way as best you can back to the others. Yeah, we'll walk yeah. right. Yeah. Back up. Oh. Okay, oh, you Cherry, Cherry, Numel, and Victor. The other three have vanished. Oof, oof. Uh, should we go after them? 
I suppose we should. Did you see what triggered them disappear? Just going into the room or? They stepped into the room and disappeared as best you can tell. There I go, stepping into the room. Resistance roll minus 30, please. Come on, make it. Yeah, I just want you to take the gems. <laughs> and Victor, can you make a roll minus 30? Uh, Cherry, you really badly fail that. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Victor, you fail that as well. I'm going to move you off the map. And Numel, give me... <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, Numel, oh. give me a resistance roll. Oh, good. So you fail it as well. Do they each time oh, appear on the altar, like lying down on it? Right, so the three of you, uh, and bear with me, I'm not going to hop backwards and forwards maps or channels. This is going to do my head in on a Friday. <laughs> so you three uh, appear in rapid succession around the altar um, on the floor below you. So let me just show you oh. that map again. Uh, right, so Cherry, Victor and Numel, you're in pitch darkness, but you can see off in the distance... Mm -hmm. You can hear, you can see a bobbing light and you can hear a distinctive noise of a heartbeat. Thump, 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 thump. Very regular. Can the three of you give me perception rolls, please, as you strain to hear what is moving off in the distance? Do they all appear on top of each other as well? Um, yeah, very <laughs> close. For the sake of our delicate listeners, no, they're not all on top of each other and all mangled up and superimposed. Um, but yeah, pretty much. Um, let me see. Yeah, Cherry might 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 be. Well, fortunately, Cherry was. Yeah, Cherry was underneath, so Cherry's been squashed. Uh, a <laughs> impact. <No! critical>. What? <laughs> what? I've been sandwiched. No. Yeah, switch point. <laughs> Get remove me. your hand Dirty old man. Yeah. remove your hand that's not my hand <laughs> um yeah numel you can also hear sorry so can victor you can hear the telltale sound of iron shod boots on a floor whatever is moving is moving away from you but it's clearly armed or armored and there's a strange thumping noise coming from the creature or creatures what do you wish to do so we can just see the three of us. We we can't see our. Did the light that I had not come with us? Give me an open-ended roll, please. Oh dear! Spilled it all, all over the three of you. You're dead. <laughs> okay, that's good enough. The lantern uh, toppled. The glass is smashed, but it hasn't gone out, and you haven't spilled oil over yourselves. So you do have a lantern. Um, you can see that the light was heading towards the stairs this way and that bobbing light has now gone out follow it okay yeah i agree okay the light is going up the stairs uh and you can see the telltale last glimmerings of the light as you approach the foot of the stairs whatever it is it's going after obviously where it thinks your companions are although they've obviously vanished just like you yeah meanwhile up above uh silk ugnan and cran I'm assuming, Silk, you're probably at the back. Silk, can you give me a perception roll, please? You got it. You can hear footsteps moving stealthily along behind you. Being, we're going to be ambushed, ready and... for assault. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, shock bolt them and burn their noses off. <laughs> um, you can also see the telltale <laughs> bobbing of a lantern light. Different from Ugnan's because it's more diffuse and probably slightly larger. You can also hear the fact that one set of boots is armoured and there are okay. more than one person. So what do the three of you want to do? Just meet back at the door that we or the room that we were teleported. But I, I have a feeling it's our friends kind of thing. OK, so do you want to head back to where you were teleported from? Yeah. Just to meet, just in case. Yeah. OK, so you head back to there. Oh, I'm they're assuming... not here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming you're going to wait and see what happens, or do you want to try again to step into the room? Well, as we're coming up, can we? I want to keep an eye out for that blue creature. Yep, you can give me this time. Can you give me a medium perception roll? Okay, you get to about here. Ugnan, you think you can see the little blue sprite, whatever it is, 
um, hanging around near the doorway. And now you'll remember that back in the uh, the old asylum that you explored, you were one of the first people to see it, whatever it was. And in fact, you've seen it more often than anybody else. Mm -hmm. For the first time that you can recall, as you see it, it not only sees you, but it also holds your gaze for a while. And then it turns and ducks into the room where the serpent's head is. Before it turns, mm. Ogren's going to give it a bow. If it's presuming it's the eyes of um, okay. Mab. The little blue sprite, whatever it is, bows back at you and then seems to laugh and then runs away. Numel, Cherry and Victor, as yes. you round the corner, you can see the other three not too far away. Cheeky little bastard, isn't it? So, so was, was, was the metallic footsteps... Um, that's Cran. Cran. No, that's Cran. Yeah. And the other footsteps you can hear are Victor's. Cran has at least iron shod boots. Um, Victor almost certainly has the same. Well, I'll tell you what, if I have a drop off a cliff, I think we're all fucked. <laughs> 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 Sorry, took me a while to understand the, the meaning of that. Yes, yeah. I think so too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's I always said yes to my father when he'd ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the um, the fairy, if it took an extra second to bow, I don't know if I would have seen it too. But if not, yes, it uh, probably or... paused. Yeah, probably paused long enough for you and Cran to have noticed the thing. It's about barely a foot high. You can both give. I mean, all three of you can give me. Well, Silk and Cran and. Ugnan, you can give me perception rolls again rather than just noticing it. This time you actually are given the opportunity to, to study it a little bit more closely as well. The creature's not entirely solid in that there's a hint of transparency about it. And as you recall, it was almost totally transparent when you first saw it in um, the asylum. So it's the same creature, but it's not quite as transparent as it used to be it looks very much like a tiny one foot tall teenage girl uh okay. hair is down to its waist um it's wearing some sort of sort of robe or dress or something difficult to tell doesn't have any weapons or jewelry it's quite delicately pointed with pointed features slightly elongated nose definitely elongated elf like ears and those telltale sort of slanted eyes. Uh, but unlike elven eyes, these are cat's eyes. So fey, not elf. But exactly what it is, you don't know. Um, Silk, if you or Ognan or Cran, by any chance, if you've got any sort of arcane lore skill, you could make a roll on that. I did kind of jump the gun and threw one at you earlier. Oh, I don't know if you saw it above. Oh, right. Um, yeah, this creature is obviously some sort of elemental, but oh. a very, very simple elemental. You're used to earth, fire, water, wind elementals. You'll recall, of course, the one that Cherry has befriended. Elementals right. are normally quite mindless creatures when they're first born. And then the longer they live, the more of a personality that they take on. This creature is definitely some sort of fey um, elemental. So exactly what plane, you've got no idea. Based on the fact Ooh. that you think it's associated with Queen Mab, um, it's blue. That might be a giveaway that it's some sort of fey, ice, cold, snow elemental of some description. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's a little bit transparent, which is odd. Um, it's never tried to really speak to you. It just seems to be following you about from time to time. Okay, cool. I'll share that with the group too. Okay. You're back at the door. And you know that there's something unusual about the, about the door beyond. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do? <sighs> Cran shakes his head. Fucking weird thing that is. There is the other side, the other door there. I don't know if it'll be any different. Was there a hand imprinted on that side too or no? No, there wasn't. There was no hand imprinted on it. Mm. So you think that this one being more protected, that it would maybe relax its ward against teleporting us somewhere, but in, in this case it hasn't, versus the other side. 
Yeah, I mean, the other side could be trapped. Mm-hmm. Man says, do you reckon if you like, you could fold it by like running really fast and jumping on the bed or something? <laughs> it's, it's not a foe like that. I mean, I've got something that could probably act as a shield. It costs me quite a bit of power, but I don't know what, what the point is. I mean, what, to nab the gems, take the plaque? Right. I think I'd rather save the, my power for other things, like put reattaching limbs. Well, we can touch the, the obelisk downstairs, the, the basalt monolith. You've got to make a, an attunement roll, so you could certainly try. Let's, let's touch it anyway, Ognan, even if we don't do <laughs> No, you don't understand. We can touch it. What would go wrong? <laughs> I'm going to toss a little piece of furniture that's broken down in this room into that room and see if it disappears. Uh, it's... Okay, so you can toss a broken chair leg or yeah. another one of these strange uh, pot helms that, that, that <laughs> Tran has found into the room that he thinks actually given the smell could have been used to cook in. You toss one of those into the room. Uh, it lands in the room with a clatter. Doesn't vanish at all. Perhaps Ooh, okay. whatever this thing is, it only works on living things. Right. Or perhaps you've now broken its enchantment. Thing. Okay. Well, I'll put, I'll put another piece into the room and I'll say, I'll be right back. If it whisks me, I'll, I'll, I'll come right back to it. And I'll put it Bring on the floor. Light. Okay. I'll cast light with my hand. It'll be that 50-foot flashlight. Right. And then are you stepping into the room? Uh, on that piece of wood, yeah. Uh, well, you toss the wood into the room. Oh, this is a second piece that I'm grabbing to put within foot distance of the room. But okay. So as you, the rest room, the th- as you rest the wood on the floor, it vanishes. Oh. So I am touching it and holding it. Uh, okay, as you, as you touch, okay, getting another piece of wood, as you touch the floor and hold it, you vanish and you end up below. Wow, okay. So you scamper all the way upstairs. Well, maybe Still... on the way I'll touch that basalt monolith. <laughs> oh, you sneaky bugger. Still, <laughs> uh, do, do you want to? You'd have to make an attunement roll. Do uh, you want fine. to? Oh, yeah. This is great. Oh, She's going to meditate oh, first God. to give her a bonus. <laughs> okay, so Silk vanishes. Do we notice it takes some, some time for her? Oh, to well. Back? Okay, so Silk. Oh, right, let me have a look and see what Slips role you need. into a meditation Just, trance. Gosh, you're going to be gone at least 10 minutes. So Silk has been gone a long time. I, it took you about five <laughs> to ten minutes to return. <laughs> five to ten minutes go, and there's no silk. Ugland yeah, wants to uh, take a like run and jump across the threshold to try and touch, trying to get past go. as much floor as possible. While he, after about okay. waiting for about five minutes, Ugland, you land in the room as long as you and you land solidly in the room, you're fine. That's after about five, ten minutes. Let's call it ten minutes. Okay. Um, what do the rest of you want to do? Um, Ugnan has shrugged and just leapt into the room. Because nice. Trying to follow him in case anything, anything surprises him, and they will do the same actions that Ugnan did, like jump straight in. I see. So, Cran, you leap into the room as well. Okay. Boing! So ah. going to take the stairs down <laughs> and uh, go look for her. Okay. Right. You're going to have to take a lantern with you. Yep. So, Victor goes off yep. to try and find Cherry. Uh, okay, stop there. Thank you. That'll do. So yeah. he heads off. Uh, Numel, what do you want to do? I'm and... going to take a flying leap as well. Okay. He leaps in. Cherry, what do you want to do? Well said. Got to do it. You're leaping in as well? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you'll have to leap there. Otherwise, you'll be teleported as well. All right. All right. So I'll come back to you for in a minute. Gosh, thank God for this other win, uh, this other channel. Silk, can you join me? You'll be the quickest to get rid of. Can you join me in the planning <laughs> channel, please? <laughs> I will do. Oh, no. I will do. Oh, this no. is what self-discipline failures do, boys. I'll see you in the... Bye-bye. And oh. Numal's going to go over and lie on the bed. Whoa, brave man. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what happens. This is where you find out it was the altar to the sex god. <laughs> if you're plasma <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 
Okay. Thank you very much for your patience, folks. Um, that kind of actually went quite well for Silk, but not as well as she hoped. Um, but she'll have some useful information. So she's gone probably about 20, 25 minutes, and then she'll return with Victor. In the meantime, what do you want to what do you want to do? Um, if I give well, you that give you the description of the room again. So big bed, um, elegant silver pillars that support gossamer-like screens, uh, four other pillars, three of which have gemstones on them. And behind those pillars with gemstones, there are plaques that uh, you know are engraved with black Nuretti writing. What do you wish to do? So, so Numel's on the bed. He's sort of lying down on it. <laughs> okay. Hardy, perhaps. Um, so, so he's lying on his back on the bed and, and looking around, particularly at the at the pillars. On, okay. On the can you give gems. me, as you lie down, can you give me first of all a channeling resistance roll? I'm not going to tell you what the penalty is. Oh no. I think I know what the plaque says. Bed. Contagious syphilis. <laughs> Bed of choking, yeah. Okay. Okay. And then can you give me a perception roll, please, Numal? Somebody slept in my bed and they're still there. <laughs> <laughs> Did that work? Uh, That's because you forgot I... to take the handcuffs off. Okay. Oh, Sixty-six. Bosco, I do, we do worry about you. Um, <laughs> so, as you oh, lie down on to, the bed, Numo, <laughs> as you lie down on the bed, Numo, <laughs> you get the faintest sense that um, what you're doing isn't quite appropriate. And you also get the feeling <laughs> that... So Let's rather, see your hands, new ball. What's going on there? <laughs> Above the covers. You are totally the wrong group for this. <laughs> um, you also get the it. feeling that some very dark deeds have occurred in this chamber. Oh, yeah. And yes, in this bed. And no, oh. none of them involved a sack <laughs> of any description whatsoever. <laughs> oh, my God. This has turned into an episode from Viz. Anyway. <laughs> As you look around, you can see that the three pillars uh, and the gemstones are all are visible from the head of the bed. The one pillar that hasn't got a gemstone on it is slightly out of sight. So whoever would have used this bed chamber obviously had the pillars positioned so that she could look at them or he could look at them. Um, you also actually, with that perception smell, get the very faintest hint of a feminine perfume. Oh, this might be in the uh, warrior queen's place. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I relay all this information to um, Cran, Ugnan, and Cherry. Um, I lean back, sort of lie, lie back, have a look around, um, and then 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 examine more closely the posts. Uh, the are they, bed are they, posts. Are they, are they are they are they part of the, the yeah the are bed they, posts they like attached to the bed? Presumably yes, they are. Part of the yeah, bed, the whole bed sort of post. Bed. I mean, this is one of those old-fashioned, uh, in our terms, four-poster beds. Only rather than the post being made of ornate wood, these are made of some sort of uh, elaborate steel and silver alloy. Heavy. It would take two of Cran's strength to move them. But each pillar would be worth about 50 gold coins if you could remove them. OK, at which point, having laid in the bed and kind of wondered what the hell's going on, Cherry and Victor appear at the door. Does oh, anyone want to join me on the bed? Whoa, 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 so, no, come on. I, so I, I, takes I, a step forward and disappears again. <laughs> 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 Whee, I do. This... So uh -huh. I definitely thank uh victor for helping find me because guys i look my eyes are wider than they've ever been my hair is mussed up a little bit from the experience and i'm panting like i'm just so excited about what just happened okay so what if you so, what have you found so what's going on so, so this you want to yeah yeah if you want to come so, in there i think you have to like jump or something stupid through the door but I, oh is that how you guys got in there yeah oh, okay it's uh some kind of Radius run out doorway. Just jump over the floor. Oh, that makes more sense now. 
But uh, so yeah, listen to this. So I touched the the big basalt monolith and I attuned to it, but not quite all the way. But the biggest news is that Vramaver is somehow not dead. She, thousands of years later, she's somehow still alive. I can't believe it. But she's somewhere in time. So I, obviously we've got to find these rods, meet her somewhere in time, and then I can have the basalt monolith when you Cran defeats her. <laughs> is that <laughs> is that her bed that uh, Numel's lying in? Oh no, that's her um, her stink stinky uh, demon friend. What Numel? <laughs> <laughs> what me? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, the bed is. I I don't know. I don't know about the. So remind me again who Framavera was. Was that uh, so goddess? Framavera is the no, uh, but very near. So if you piece a few things together, which you would have done, and this doesn't require an Ognan conjecture, she's the daughter <laughs> of Kadena, who is the kind of the big big nemesis figure in oh. all of Shadow World. So she's the mm -hmm. daughter of Kadena. Um, she came to the city. And from the volcanoes to the north, exactly what woke her up and who bought it, you don't know. Anyway, she came to the city and immediately stirred the Nereti up, who were a peaceful pastoral folk, confined to Aaron Moor by the seas and the serpents. And the Nereti people split basically into two factions. Those that wanted to carry on with their pastoral, peaceful life farming and so on and those that wanted to or i don't know embrace civilization for want of a better word um you get the feeling i think the shadow world that terry amp or a bit like um jrr tolkien are on, on fans of of urbanization Great. anyway the nereti people kind of split in half you had this big city of Tarek nev you had a minor civil war which vramavers folk won that wasn't enough for her. She then started waging war on all the lands around Aaron Moor, at which point this raised the ire of um, the gods and the Amorishi and the lawmasters, and they descended on the city, uh, the night of burning fire, and basically destroyed the Nereti gods that Framavere had, I suppose, introduced the worship of to the city, destroyed the, the city that you can see, banished the gods, and so on and so forth, and basically plunged all of the Nereti into oblivion, including virtually all of the inhabitants. You suspect that if there's something like the portal rods around, there could be many Nereti, some Nereti, maybe just Ramaphair's picked Nereti, who have now hidden somewhere in the time stream. So the stone below, which is very, very powerful indeed, is attuned to her. And Silk knows that if she can, if you guys can defeat Vramavere, then attuning to the stone will be child's play for her. And it's going to be very, very powerful for her. How she gets it off the city might be a, be a bit more of a problem. But Vramavere <laughs> is not dead. She's trapped or hiding in time somewhere. The difficulty, and she's not a fool, is that if you go back in time, then you are very much trapped by it because of what your possible actions could do to future periods. You know, you've, you've seen enough films and movies to know the perils about manipulating events in the past. Yeah. So, so chooses not to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Actually, it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. She, Cran, Cran, she kind Cran's of looking at the discussion, and, and, he, and he's thinking... This is like inner monologuing going on here. <laughs> Back in time, change the past... Well, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> a lot easier than trying to heal my brother's head wound, that's for sure, by the sound of things. I didn't even know you could do that. But that's he it. doesn't mention that to anyone yet. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, the portal rods could offer many of you, um, and not just Silk, a rather fatal temptation. We haven't gone too deeply into your pasts, but if you glance over at Ugnan, Ugnan has clearly had more of a fraught past than many of you. Exactly what I was thinking. Uh, thinking wow. There are many secrets about him that he has never, ever revealed. All of us, yeah. Have our backgrounds. That's awesome. The temptation is there. <laughs> yeah. There is. Okay, All Ugland's going to bite the bullet and grab one of these gems. Well, I, I say, have a look at it first, and then put his hand, and then just gingerly touch the tip of a finger to one of them. 
Oh yeah, so one of the you say the plaques. Is it a plaque? Are there several plaques? So four plaques or one plaque? There are three plaques, one for each of the gems. Okay. Okay, let me cast a spell to learn what these say, just in case for you. Do you know what I mean? I'll I'll do it for you. Okay, you don't need to worry about about idioms and and so on. So (laughs) the spell works, says that. One gem says that. And the third says that. Ooh. Prince Jeremas desires pawn. The other one, Embrosar, soon forgotten. <laughs> Mortalist, the greatest of the least. I'm thinking of our podcast listeners. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm really sorry that I wasn't looking at the screen when you read out <laughs> Desire's Pawn, and I completely misread what you just read out. <laughs> For our listeners, that's spelled P-A-W-N. So, uh, just <laughs> <laughs> Accent. I'm still yes, alone it's... on the bed. I'm still alone yes. on the bed. <laughs> Yes, Desire's Porn, not some sort of desire for HBO, Netflix, or any sort of blue movie channel suddenly <laughs> satellite broadcast in. <laughs> oh, Terry, I bet you didn't have this trouble when you wrote this stuff. Right. <laughs> okay. So the, each of the three gems is named, perhaps, or linked to somebody. Prince Jeremus, Embrasar, and Mortillus. And then after the name of the person, there's some sort of description or maybe epitaph. Mm-hmm. The pole that's Was... missing a gem, is there any kind of setting for a gem? That... So it might have been one there. There's no setting, but there's no setting holding these gems really uh, in place. Um, there's just a fist-sized green gemstone, which pulsates and throbs, which is sitting on top. Okay. So there's clearly space for a fourth. Who knows? Perhaps touching the gemstone will turn you into one of the fourth places. There you go. Touch it. That, that, that's, that, that's your own voice in your head, Silk, isn't it? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is. It is. Let me make a roll for a second. Oh, no, no. Oh, okay, yeah, it's that's not a It's not a portal, so I don't that's think true. Thing. Yeah, I'll get a plus. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, says Silk. Uh, the which, greatest and the least. Which of the three do you want to grab? Apparently the greatest and the least. I, I, I say out loud as I'm walking towards it with this funny look on my face as usual. Um, moth to a flame, as it were. I say to you guys, hey, weren't there names of, of these guys or, or the greatest and the least triggers my memory of the um, the the coins in the pond uh, yes. place? Yes, there were. But these hmm. those names in the temple that you went to where you got your demon bashing weapons. That's it. Uh, yes, they were similar in that there were names with some description afterwards, but none of these names ring a bell. Though, so you can make a memory roll, please. OK. Oh, no. Derp. I'm a, well, I'm a derp yeah. derp elf. You think Mortillus. Uh, was one of the ones, as you've just said, you think Mortillus is one of those that you can... And so grasping that gem, you're somewhat disappointed when you can see this ghostly apparition begin to appear um, just to the side of the pillar. The human who forms is about six and a half feet tall, clearly a large man, but completely clad in black plate armour. Hi. Um, he's his head <laughs> is completely encased in a heavy helm, which he makes no attempt to move. He stares out at you and in a deep fall, in a deep voice, um, booms out who summons General Mortillus, leader Cran. of the Bear Armies. Cran does, Cran summons. Cran Cran will step forward and say, uh looking at a scant uh <laughs> Yeah, it was me. I told uh, you. Pran. To... Sorry, uh, my, name, how... my name's Pran. <laughs> okay, how tall are you? Uh, six foot six. Okay, so he looks up at you, but he is, I mean, you're a big, uh, for want of a better phrase, you're a big bastard, Cran, and there aren't many bigger than you. General Mortillus is about three inches shorter, but perhaps aided by the armour, he's fully as big. He looks at you and shakes his head and looks at your weapons. And if if he was capable of sighing, he would. And he says, I I know no cran. You 
are not one of mine, I recall, but there have been so many over the years, so many comrades killed, so many men lost. I Do I know you? And he looks up at you. General, I don't think we've met. I may not be from your time. My time? My time? What do you mean? So we are here searching for knowledge, and this place may not be the same as it was in the time when you lived here. What was what things do you remember, General? Okay. Re- is... Things that recently happened to you. He lowers his head into his hands, gauntleted hands, and he kind of shakes his head as if trying to clear, I don't know, a hangover or something. And he says, I I remember so so little. I remember the Queen summoning me. I remember I remember a f- I remember a flash and then and then nothing but I c- and he shakes his head but I can still see I can see the dark place where I am I'm I'm in a dark place and it is a it is an arena but it is underground underground an underground arena but I don't know where and he looks up at you, Cran, uh, and he begins to remove his helm. And you can see as he, with difficulty, lifts the helm off, you can see um, a skeletal face. There are just the hint of flesh and bone clinging to it. But it is a skeleton's head underneath the helm. Though disturbingly, as he lifts it up, um, you can see these burning, I say burning, these deep, dark but glistening black eyes cran can you give me a an extremely hard channeling roll please channeling resistance oh. roll sorry cran i think that's a lot there man i mean no <laughs> the gm made me do it in the tower uh yes one just for the sheer lol <laughs> Minus eight. <laughs> oh, okay. Cran's eyes roll back in his head. <laughs> okay. Cran, um, you flinch and step away and hastily uh, look down at your feet. Um, in the instant that you met Gen- General Mortillus's gaze, you had this feeling that this poor creature has fought and all of his life. And when I say he's fought all of his life, um he has fought battle after battle for thousands of years um some he's lost some he's won but he's never been able to die he's seen his comrades his wives his children his brothers his sisters die again and again and again and again and again for all of his life he has fought and he's seen people and he himself he has seen people die around him the mortal wounds that he's taken have incapacitated him sometimes for years sometimes for decades but he's always recovered to start again he is drawn to a battlefield and to war as a moth is born to flame he has no control over it he has led armies he's been a humble soldier he's been a sapper he's been a scout but he's always been in the cauldron of war Cranor, look if I'm if I can with his terrible channeling role, but tears running down Cran's cheeks, he looks up and says to the general, "I'm lost to words. How can I help you, general? You need to rest." Are any of the rest of you looking at the general, or are you sort of looking away as his helmet comes off? No, Ugnan will still be looking. Okay, Ugnan, can you uh, give so... me any of you who are looking? Can you give me a very hard uh, channeling roll? Sorry, no, extremely hard channeling roll. My apologies, Cran. Extremely hard channeling roll for all of you who are looking at the general's tortured face. It's okay. Minus eight, two. It doesn't make a lot of difference. <laughs> <laughs> so the only person who, perhaps because of her own experiences of being near immortal, the only person who comes close to being able to hold the poor warrior's gaze is Silk, but she too is forced to look away as the enormity of the suffering that this man has been put through all of his existence is made clear to you. He looks at you, Cran, and seems 
disappointed but not upset and expectant or uh, almost as if he expected you to not be able to hold his gaze and he begins to put his helmet on again and he says that if you wish to free me and i don't know if that is possible find where i still roam and defeat me there now that i am sundered from my spirits and he looks at the gem crush the gem as you kill my mortal body, that will release me. Oh well. All right, he will get an open-ended roll to try and remember anything else. I'll get right on that. Okay. <laughs> so sure, uh, <laughs> give me your number. I'll give you a ring. A super <laughs> three minute. To be honest, quest-wise, I'm booked up. I'd love to help. Okay, so he tell he can tell you, Cran, that he's in some sort of underground arena somewhere mm-hmm. in the city roaming this underground arena if you can kill him there and crush the gem within a few moments of his death or just before you kill him he'll be released does he have um, any weaknesses cry and ask him i'm not asking him he's too noble for that boy big lad <laughs> you got, any, have you got <laughs> any weaknesses that's right if you want to turn uh, he looks at you rest. and as he puts his helmet on he shakes his head and he looks at Cran. Cran, can you give me a perception roll, please? You're the closest person to him. This is kind, you know, to to try and read what a, a skeletal figure. Oh yeah, Cran. It's obvious. As he looks at you, he clearly looks regretful and apologetic at what he's just asked you to do. He's asked you to defeat him, uh, and he's never and been he's, defeated. And yeah. he's never been defeated. Um, he doesn't admit to a weakness. But he does tell you as he begins to fade back into the gem, which begins to pulse again, that it was Vrama there who killed him. Yeah, I think she killed with all magic. three of the people with gems here. What a fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Silk. Do you want to talk to the other two? <laughs> yeah, I would, actually. Hang on a minute. I just need a, need five minutes. Have you got any... Um... I need a bit of a snort of something after that. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Cran, you can probably take some Rook if there is any. There is none left. There's <laughs> none left. Right. We're all sharing that it. That bloody ugly, he can't count. He knew we were going to be in here for days. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So in the next, well, actually, fortunately for Cran and all of you with various addictions, because of the temporal displacement here, none of you will suffer any of those ill effects from addiction. Yeah. But as soon as you leave uh, Tarek Nev, your addiction is going to hit you full force. Oh, uh, in fact, you'll probably have days and right. days and days enough to. to I, was, I was given enough to, to survive. Yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. feel the need to take any of that herb right at the moment. Okay, so do any of you want to try and commune with any of these other? Trapped individuals. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try uh, Embrosar if possible. Okay. Uh, again, as you take the gem off the pedestal and hold it, uh, the gem stops pulsing for a while, and the incorporeal shape of a human, a very muscular, in fact, massive, even taller and bigger then Mortillus appears on the right of the pillar. He's clearly not one of the Nereti because of his huge size. He's uh, over seven foot. He's not wearing any armour. He's bare from the waist up, completely hairless, with huge muscular folded arms, with um, massive, what could be um, iron rings around huge biceps. Not a pleasant person to look at, not ugly, but just big, almost bestial. He looks at you with a sneer, Ugnan, and says, Little man, why are you talking to me? I crush you. Crush you. I've summoned you because I wish to speak with you. I'm... No one summons Embrosas. Embrosas summons. You go or I will crush you under my foot, little man. And but... He lifts one huge foot and stamps it down on the floor. But of course, it makes no sound at all. Like Ramavera stomped on you. He snarls at you and almost reaches forward and then says, I will kill her. I will crush her with my hand. And he reaches Cran out. steps forward as if he's reaching towards Agnan. Cran's going to do his best to interpose. 
He he points one huge finger at Ukraine and says, "You with your metal, you are not scared. I am Brassus. I I bend you. Metal bends, and I will bend you in half. Big man." Right. Wolf two. Um, can sunshine. You... <laughs> well, see sunshine. <laughs> Cran says you're trans. <laughs> you're incorporeal. So fuck off. Um, <laughs> can you all give me perception rolls, please? So Imbrosus is is hugely uh, muscular. Uh, clearly, at the mention of Bramavere's name, what was a very arrogant demeanor changed to one of anger and rage. It's not too hard to imagine as much as you know, and certainly Ugnan very quickly said that Vramavere killed this creature, whatever he is, and he's now, he's clearly eager to kill, to crush Vramavere. You might be able to negotiate with him, maybe find out more. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. We're some, it's like this, uh, we're after her as well. We believe she's still around. We want to defeat her. We want to know in it, anything you know about, any weaknesses, obviously, it, she's all best of you, but I bet if you had another crack at it, you might do better this time. He frowns at you and he says, you'll give me proof that she, thou bitch, is alive and I will help you. Embrasas will help you pull her apart. But I need proof. Proof and that she lives. And where can we find your mortal remains? He looks at you and then looks at himself. And looks horrified at what he sees. Can you give all give me perception rolls again, please? Mm. Ah, wow. Uh, Embrosus the cruel. Or what's what's this? What's the phrase? Uh, read like a book and played like a fiddle. Embrosus <laughs> the cruel clearly did not realize. Uh, he's called the cruel, not the wise. Embrosus the cruel did not realize that he was dead. So oh. as soon as you say mortal remained, and he looks down and he can see that he's transparent. And he waves a hand through himself and he waves a hand through the pillar and he's clearly lost for words. Fuck that ugly's a harsh bastard. Look, look at it. Look at the way he didn't know that. Jeez. <laughs> um, he's shocked. And when he looks up, this time his face has completely changed and he almost looks like a, a helpless child. And, and uh, his voice has changed. And uh, dead. I. Sh- I, I can't. She she brought me in, and we we drank and and we we made a love, and then there was a flash, dead. I often find that happens at the end of the love making bit. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I can only do this once here, and then one of us is going to die. It must be it'll be worth it. Le petit mort. Okay. Um, so. Poor old Embrosus didn't realise that he was dead. He has no idea where his uh, mortal remains are, um, unlike Mortillus, who you've just spoken to. But he's ha- he is willing to help you if you can just give him proof that uh, Vre is alive somewhere. And um, Embrosus, have you ever been like... When was, last time someone spoke to you, was uh, was it... Has anyone ever done that before? Or was the last thing you remember was being in the bed? I remember the bed. And she told me to get the drink. I stand up and and he gestures helplessly. And he says, but the bitch, you, you show me, get me her helm. Get me her, her magic helmet, the one with the powers. Then I know she is alive somewhere. For the helmet, it only works when she is alive. Show me the helmet and I will help you kill the bitch. Wow. So get a helmet. Um, And I'm sure I should have said something else, but there you go. Uh, So if you can find her helmet somewhere and show that to Mortillus. um, Sorry, not Mortillus, to Embrosus the Cruel. He's quite willing to help you. Exactly what help he will be, you don't know, but he's willing to help. Mm-hmm. And sorry, Does he I can't... know where the helmet is? He doesn't know. Besides no. on her head. <laughs> no, he doesn't believe it's on her on her head. No, it's in it's somewhere, somewhere, but we don't know her. Sounds like a cherry thing, yeah. Um so the gems that you've got for obviously for Embrosus Mortillus 
and Prince Jeremy. So you can take with you if you want to, or you can leave them here. We Does anybody want to commune with Prince Jeremus to find out what he knows? Well, I think we should. Yeah, if we can. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so who wants to grab a gemstone? A product then for... <laughs> <laughs> everyone, everyone, does, does everyone take one step backwards or something? That's, I was just going to say that exactly. Oh, all right then, fine. Prince Jeremus, I summon you! Throw up like a Pokemon ball. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Expelliano! <laughs> or whatever. Okay, so you grasp the third of the three gems, and again, the gemstone stops pulsing with light. And this time, the figure that appears, another man, is, as you probably guessed, is tall, uh, dressed in violet robes. He's not armed. He's uh, thin, angular, um, with a short, dark beard, obviously of the Nuretti. Um, his face is somewhat cruel. And as he appears in front of you, he's just about six foot, but no more than that. He folds his arms and looks at you, Ognan, and says, ah, the healer. And what can the prince do for you? And he looks across the room and says, and the rest of your your party. I gather you've spoken to the general. Rather tragic case, poor fool. And Embrosas. And he just shakes his head and smiles rather unpleasantly. Yes, I, I, like, it's, it's really tragic. Like, you know, they're long dead and they're trapped in a gem, you know, unlike you. Yes. I, I'll wait. Yes. Oh, oh no. And he looks down at himself. I'm a little bit more um, alert than my friends. Uh, and you can see when he says the word friend, he definitely doesn't mean it. He says, oh, I know I'm I'm trapped. But unlike Mortillus, I don't seek death. And unlike Imbrosus, I don't want to wish to uh, crush people. Um, I would just like the city back, please. So uh, so here's the deal. And he looks across at all of you. Um, you help me kill um, that bitch who killed me after that wretched silver card nonsense. And, um, well, I'll help you in any way I can. Uh, what, what nonsense was that? Sorry. It sounds quite reasonable. Beware. Oh, silver cards. Um, it, it was only afterwards I, I really realised the significance of it. It was a little bit foolish of me, I must admit. So, uh, as you probably surmised, and he gestures across at the bed, you know, a little bit of hanky-panky over there. Um, voracious appetite, Vrama, voracious appetite. Uh, I lasted longer than most, of course. Uh, but still, when she'd had enough, um, silver card, you see. Silver card, come and see me. Uh, up the stairs I trot. And, well... Bob's your uncle, or not. And uh, here I am. Flash your light. So, oh. Absolutely. So uh, mortal remains and all that sort of tosh. Um, I'd suggest you try the crypt. Unlike the general, um, I don't exactly know where I am. Oh, don't bother looking for him, Brussels. He's really not worth the bother. So we kill her, and then what are you going to do for us? Yeah, we kill her. You get the city. What happens for us? He looks at you nonplussed and he says, well, whatever you wish. I, you know, I wasn't called Prince Jeremus for my good looks. Um, and he looks down at, um, he looks at you, Silk, and he says, the stone, for, for, for example. Um, you probably think it's, it's a rather simple thing, killing, killing that bitch and taking that stone. Uh, you'll find the stone is actually fixed to the city itself, the very bedrock. Uh, of course, with my help. And he waggles his fingers. Um, that won't be a problem. So there you go, young Silk. Um, help me, and I help you. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I sign? Which contract? <laughs> um, he looks at you, Cran, and he says, "In you, uh, the heart, I believe, or is it the hand? I, 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 I do get confused. Um, anyway, the heart." heart. He calls you the heart and he says, so, and you the heart, you're obviously after uh, that stone, the Ashling stone. Again, help me kill Vrama there and I shall tell you where it is. How about you tell me where it is? Just as a good will gesture and then we'll help you. 
He chuckled. I think you're talking him. blowing smoke out of your ass. I've met men, men like you before. His eyes narrow. Uh, he says, I wouldn't talk to me like that if I were you. And he strokes his beard and he says, I may not have the body anymore to hurt you. And of course, that means you can't hurt me. But he points at his head and says, but all the rest of it is still up here. The heart, indeed. Demonstrate it. The brain. Ooh, okay. Can so you give me yeah, a mentalism? Can you give me a <laughs> mentalism resistance role? He focuses on you, Cran. Highly unlikely. Well, how hard is this one? <laughs> um, it's just a regular mentalism resistance role, please. Cran, there's a great pressure applied to your head. And the room begins to change slightly. Ugnan's face um, melts. Clearly the Ugnan that you, who healed you and took on your wounds when your head was, was almost crushed, clearly took on something of the demon uh, as well. As for Cherry, well, the armour that she's wearing, you know, is vampiric armour. And you know that that vampiric armour warps and corrupts the wearer. As Ugnan begins to change and look slightly leeringly at you, unpleasantly at you, he can tell that you're under some sort of mental uh, compulsion and he's not going to help. He's going to watch what happens and probably enjoy it. Um, Cherry's enjoying this too. She quite likes the fact that your head is slowly being changed. Uh, Victor's going to be a problem. Best deal with him and best deal with him quickly. That sword of yours, I'd have a go Cran, at him if I were you. Cran, it's not a catastrophic role, but he's he's going to back off and start looking quite fearful at all his comrades. OK, can the rest of you give me perception roles, please? You can see that Cran has reacted very strangely and very poorly, he is beginning to raise town, sorry, shield breaker up to shoulder height and is looking at you victor cran has at has taken up high guard which you know as a soldier is a prelude to him stepping in and trying to take your head off with that terrible weapon that he has you need to do something about it either retreat or get your blow in first i'm actually yeah. gonna take out my shield instead and i still have the lantern in the other hand okay uh, Cran. All right, all right, right, Prince, Prince, you've proved your point. Uh, I, I, I'm going to say, fucking Ugnan, something fucking happened to you, but I don't trust this wanker here. And he's going to crouch down, um, waiting for Victor to move as he's sort of moving his shield out. Okay. Hold, hold, hold. Prince, all, right, prince, all right, Prince, yeah, please Prince, then. we can see. Okay, uh, Ugnan, can you give me... Now, normally I'd ask for some sort of diplomacy role. Uh, I think you're going to have to make some sort of persuasion role. I don't think there's a specific skill. Seduction. Um, <laughs> <laughs> actually, seduction, <laughs> if you're female and you've got seduction, yes, that would work perfectly. It, um, it's not just sexual, though. Yes, no, emotionally no. <laughs> manipulate some. Um, but a seduction from a male on him is penalty. But from a well, female, it won't have any penalty. But I agree. No, it's not just uh, come to bed and get it. Yeah. It, it says yeah, manipulation of that. a person. That's right. Um, so you can make a seduction yeah. roll if you're male with a penalty. You can make a seduction roll without a penalty if you're female. Or you can make a presence dice roll. And with apologies no. to our female listeners, and is that adjusted by bra size or something? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, no. Okay. Oh, I no. picked that mini for a reason. <laughs> no, <laughs> the clothing. No, I'm yeah. sorry, Silk. Remember, you've got some rather big, voluminous robes there. That's true. Pockets don't do anything for Prince Jeremus. They're hiding. I, yeah. I think you mean globes, but uh, yeah, globes. <laughs> of uh, Prince Jeremus looks at you, Bugnan, and smirks, and the compulsion is lifted from you, Cran. Nice. Oh, fuck. And I, I, it's suddenly like, I'll literally just drop the sword and then put my hands up and say, what? and then I'll look at, uh, I won't even say anything. Uh, and then I'll look over at the... Um, okay. You've got a slight 
headache, but nothing major. What you all notice is the fact that obviously shield breakers insistent thumping noise is a little bit faster and got quite fast a few seconds ago. Where Where is the apparition standing? Probably just to the left of where Ugnan is standing at the moment. Right. I'm going to um, pick up the sword and just walk over to there and then lunge forward and smash it down with a huge strike on its head. Okay, what are you striking? The I'm 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 assuming it's a, literally a person because I'm. So oh right, scared. you're striking at Jeremus. Jeremus, are sh- yeah. Right, are you sure you want to attack him? I'm absolutely positive. I player wise, absolutely convinced I shouldn't. Cran wise, absolutely convinced I shouldn't. So. Oh. Okay. No. Okay. Too late. Uh, it's too late for that, I'm afraid. So let me just call up the combat tracker. So, Cran, the prince was way over here when you uh, assaulted <laughs> Yeah, <him>. downstairs. <laughs> so can I have some initiative rolls, please? But, Cran, come what may on your initiative roll, you're going to go first. Oh, you better stun him, buddy. And I'm sure he's unstunnable. Oh, oh why do I have to be first? Well, Shit. Cran is going to get first swing because he steps up and he initiates combat. And then we'll go via combat order. So, Cran, if you want to swing at this creature, whatever it is, go ahead. Yep. So I am absolutely... Because I I think Cran realised that he was absolutely being controlled, but it was 100% real to him. Yes. And he's never encountered anyone with that power over him before. And he's absolutely... He would never admit it to anyone, but he's absolutely cacking himself. Because he nearly made me kill a friend. So no. I'm going absolutely all in with uh, with one strike. If, I, if that doesn't kill it, I, I know I'm probably going to okay. be killing my friends in the next five seconds. So okay. Cran will he'll step around, kind of sidestep Ugnan and swing at him from there uh, with the shield breaker. Okay, so as your blade strikes, oh, I should have cleared the stack here. As your blade smashes into the creature, the creature actually is, well, Jeremus is clearly surprised by the fact that your blade not only bites into him, it actually is almost makes the sound that you would expect a sword to make if it was striking striking flesh. There is a smack sound as the blade bites into his side and hits him. So can you make uh, an open-ended critical, please? Wow! <laughs> 150. Whoa, that's Boom. happy. Open well, end. fucking bollocks. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, microphone's too good now. Yeah, I, 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 yes, please edit that. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, that is uh, a smooth strike. So you catch... Uh, Prince Jeremus across the top of his head, um, taking off the top of his head, um, literally. His no. body stands upright for a few seconds. The top of his head goes hurtling across uh, to the left of the wall. The body freezes for a second, and then he just crumples to the floor like something has been inflated with the valve removed. He's dead. Wow. What happens to the gem? Uh, the gem fades um, and then it starts pulsing again. I'd like oh, to pick up the top half of his it. skull and say, this would make a good bowl for you. <laughs> <laughs> As you reach for the top half of the skull, you can see both the top half of the skull, which is still transparent, begins to fade and the body yeah. begins to fade and the gem slowly begins to pulse again. Right. So you've defeated him and sent him back into the gem. Might want to wait Cran a while is... before summoning him again, I think, lad. Yeah. <laughs> Cran's well, whole body's I... shaking at the moment. Uh... Yeah, well, I was could... going to ask him where he might have seen the rods, where it might be, but we can't fucking ask him now because you chopped his fucking head off. <laughs> I asked him to blow the doors off. <laughs> Hang on, maybe he doesn't know how much time has passed again, and we can be like, hey, you know, without Cran in the room, obviously. But we could, you know, summon him again and go, hey, we're brand new people. Who, <laughs> you know, I'll stop making like the mustaches. F- fake beards. Fake beards <laughs> <Yeah>. and mustaches. <laughs> um, okay, so you've defeated the shade of Prince Jeremus. 
Uh, you don't know how long it's going to be before you can summon them again. But if you pick up the gem, nothing happens. And the gem feels slightly cooler, still warm, but slightly cooler to the touch as you pick it up. Uh, didn't see that coming at all. Didn't expect the fight. Didn't expect a, a low kill. Well, yeah. Kick ass. Not a crap, but yeah. You can't solve everything by chopping people's heads off, Cran, all right? No, you can't. <laughs> if it doesn't work first time, you just need a bigger sword. Oh my gosh, that was a me. But now I will never be able to take that basalt monolith, apparently. <laughs> 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 it all keeps Maybe coming something. back to that. Yeah. Shock bolt him. Go on, go on, Silky. You know you want to. A cheeky little shock bolt up the bum. Go on. That's right. There. I need a funnel. <laughs> so so Numal wakes up, yawns and stuff. Did I miss anything? <laughs> yeah, you don't have Shag on, on that bed because you could be on the other fourth post there. Yeah. Is it is there a mattress? Presumably there's a mattress on there. Yeah, yeah. No, the bed is uh well upholstered and even after all of the decades that have passed, it's still comfortable. Can we just <clears throat> check this room over? under the bed? Anything under the bed? Uh, you can give me a perception roll for looking under the bed, Numal. If the rest of you want to give the room a search, if you can tell me roughly what you're searching for, where you're searching. Numal, there's wow. nothing under the bed at all. No secret compartments in the floor, of course. This is upstairs. Um, Ugnan, where are you looking? I'm checking on the other side of the other door to see if there's any mechanisms on it and that kind of stuff. No, it looks like a regular door mechanism. As far as you can tell, it's not trapped. Not that you're an expert on this. Um, I'm applying a penalty to your perception roll. But it doesn't look trapped at all. It looks like a regular open, closed door. Silk resists the temptation to use her flashlight and change it from a normal light wavelength to black light. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else? <laughs> Kran's just still shaking. <laughs> okay. Uh, and it, it, it will just whisper to Agnan, Agnan, just fucking kill. If you see something take over my head like that, just kill me. Do something. Or have someone kill me. That was fucking <laughs> horrible. Nah, the way those things work, lad, you've got to fight it from inside. Just use your resolve inside to try and overcome it. Well, I thought I had resolve. Okay, we went in, he went in like a... He went in like a hot knife through butter. Yeah, the way um, these things work is uh, they can't always maintain it, but you know, he's, he's probably being kept on that bedpost for a reason. He's useful to her. So maybe that's what he's useful at. Mm -hmm. Okay, what you can all give me now, give me a very hard perception roll, please. These can be in the open. It does say desire spawn. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four. Okay, it's Victor who notices the trapdoor in the ceiling. Ho, ho, ho. Nobody ever looks up. <laughs> and Numa. Numa was lying with his back on the bed. He was staring at it for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Actually, yeah. yeah, should have probably given you a roll for that. I'm sorry, yeah. Bad GM, bad GM. Okay, anyway, the plot device is still working. So you found a trapdoor <laughs> in the ceiling. It's going to lead somewhere, so best you follow it. And that's where we'll leave this session. Thanks very much for listening. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much for subscribing. All the way you can get in contact with us, all the media types, all in the description. But until next time, cheers. Bye-bye.